Have you ever felt intimidated to know what to say when a seller calls you back and you know that you need to give them a below market offer on their house, but you feel that weird feeling in your stomach like, oh, I just don't know if I can do it. That's a feeling I've had a lot, but in this episode, we're going to cover exactly what to say so you have confidence and you know how to make that offer that gives you the ability to find discounted real estate and build wealth and freedom in your life. The Deal Machine REI Podcast. Everything you need to know to get started in real estate investing. This is the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. We're on a mission to cover everything you need to know to start investing in real estate. So I'm your host, David Lecco, and this is my co-host, Ryan Haywood. Yeah, thank you, David. I'm Ryan Haywood. We have uh, Megan and I have created Heritage Home Investments. We've been doing uh, real estate investing now for over three years. We, th at the very beginning of our journey, uh, coming from not knowing anything at all about real estate, um, we did our first transaction or our first deal in 14 days of a 30-day wholesaling challenge. Um, so we were able to obtain a lead on a property, make our offer, get it under contract, and we made $8,500 on our very first real estate transaction experience. Um, so after that, we went on, we've, we, in our first year, we did 73 transactions, which is a lot of movement, um, a lot of activity. We've gone on to do over 300 transactions and now we have a full scale real estate business. That's amazing. And I have 1.6 million in rental properties with $960,000 of equity. And I started with four and a half thousand dollars and I'm so close to a million dollars. I can't wait, man. That is it's going to happen, man. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about, uh, eight properties with $160,000 of income from rents. So it's been really amazing, not only on the cash flow side, but on the equity that I've created for myself by doing the initial deal. Well, finding that discounted property, and then also allowing that to appreciate, over the last just four years. So that's been really exciting for me. You've done a lot more deals than I have. Um, and I've also seen a lot of deals through my work at Deal Machine where we've helped close 10,000 transactions in all 50 states through the app that we've created for helping people find motivated sellers and discounted properties. And so from those angles, Ryan and I are gonna talk about from our own experience on how you can actually handle this feeling you might get when you're talking with a seller and you know that you can help them out. We're gonna just help you go through the steps so that you can give them that offer that you need in order to find discounted real estate and build wealth and freedom in your life. And one really simple thing that I wanna throw at you, Ryan, and see um, what you think. First of all, Ryan mentioned wholesaling. If you don't know what that is, it is the ability to find a discounted property and then get it under contract and assign it or kind of sell the ability to close on it to another investor that has cash. So you don't need you know, cash to actually close on this property to make money by finding discounted properties. And that's exactly how Ryan started. One really simple thing, if you knock on somebody's door, you could say, hi, I'm really curious if you're interested in getting an offer on your house. Just leave it at that, plain and simple. Have you ever done that before, Ryan? Um, we, I have not done the door to door. I've never walked up on somebody and, and done that. But every conversation that we've had is generally like that over the phone. I mean, they gotcha. All of our conversations start with a postcard, um, and so they'll call me, and and that is essentially what I'm doing. I'm just not doing it face to face. So they're like, hey, I got this postcard in the, in the mail um, about wanting to buy my house. And my, my response is exactly, yeah. I mean, can you tell me a little bit about the house? They start unpacking some of that information. Um, sometimes they just tell me the offer. And I'm like, well, I need to know a little bit more details before I can make an offer. But it's essentially the exact same thing. It's just done over the phone. Mm-hmm. What I found is there is a lot you can do to refine your conversation, but you can lift a weight off my shoulders. If I see a script at first and just realize, oh, it's, it's actually really that simple. It's like, Hey, would you be interested in an offer on your house? Amazing. Let me ask you some questions. Like, why are you selling it? What type of condition is it in? When could I come over and see it? 
Um, I noticed that your house is listed for sale by owner, or it could be another angle. Um, is there anything that you could do on the price if I said I could close with cash, if I could close quickly in two weeks and pay all of your closing costs? Would you be flexible on price? So those three or four phrases are my like grounding principles. And then I pretty much can let the conversation go where it goes mm -hmm. from there, wherever the direction yeah. they take it. Yeah, that I mean, that's essentially all, all you need to communicate. And it is a, t a very intimidating. I mean, man, I even now, like having those conversations, I don't know why, but it just makes you nervous because it's it's a big in a lot of people's minds or in a lot of people's lives. That house is a big part of their life. So, you know, going into this conversation, it's not like a car or it's not like a piece of furniture. You're talking about a house. So the magnitude and the, the money involved in a house is a lot bigger scale. So it just kind of gives you a, a little intimidation on making. And nobody wants to make somebody feel offended or I at least I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable with my offer. And so generally, if I'm making an offer, I'm prepared to, to explain why my offer is that way. I'm never just going to throw a low ball offer at somebody and not explain how did I get to that number? Because that to me, that's where that, that offensiveness starts to like take over in that conversation and gives you a reason to be a little bit nervous. You know, I'm, oh, I just want to offer to 3000. What, why? I don't know. Have you ever done a deal with somebody that you initially offended with your offer? I always, I don't know where I heard this. I don't know how I even got to this, but I always, offer my offer with the sentence, Hey, I don't want this to offend you. And I'll explain how I got here. Um, and a lot of times, honestly, they're like, nothing's going to offend me. Don't worry about it. And that just kind of breaks it. Um, so I've, I don't know how I got to that. I don't know if it was just like my instinct of, I don't want to offend anyone or I don't want to offend you by, by doing this or by saying this. So here's my offer. Um, Typically, and it also depends on the deal too. Sometimes people know you have to come low on this. Sometimes there's properties like they're in a little bit better condition or it's a, it's just outdated, but it's a nice house. Uh, those are the ones that it's like, Hey, I, I don't want to offend you by this number. I want to explain how I got here. My offer is 40,000 and then just kind of give it a little bit of pause. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you don't have to say anything more and they'll be like, either A, they're going to say, okay, I could make that work. Or they're going to say, mm, we're a little off. And then that's the opportunity. Well, let me explain to you how I got to my offer. Here's the steps that I took to get here. Uh, and that starts to bring a little bit more comfort. But I'll ask them questions too. What do you think that this needs in order for me to get it into a where I could flip it or have it as a updated rental property. Like what a dollar amount that you think, uh, or even ask them, what do you think this house is worth? Cause a lot of times people have done the Zillow research, which gosh, that is a crusher in a lot of cases because they just see, well, Zillow says it's worth 110. I'm like, well, I understand that. I understand that Zillow says that, uh, but like, let's get to ground zero here and work our way back to where we're anywhere close to that number and what that what that number represents like zillow is like that's it's so hard to explain to people how your number and this estimate are so far apart mm -hmm. like zillow's not going inside your house they don't know the condition of your furnace when somebody calls you back, you know, I know you said that you you ask them uh, a few questions about the house. Where, what's your main goal for that conversation? Are you trying to learn a laundry list of you know ten things, or are you just trying to set up the appointment to go see it yourself? Uh, I, I think it's too much of an opportunity to hear a little bit about the house. Plus, you're you're getting a conversation or a relationship started with the person that called you. So, to me. I, I'm not necessarily wanting a laundry list, but gosh dang, when you let people talk, you might find out a few things about the house that you'll be able to see when you do schedule an appointment. 
So mm-hmm. um, I do usually start off that conversation with, tell me a little bit about the house. How many bedrooms is it? How many bathrooms? What's the roof condition in? How's the furnace and water heater? And then just kind of let them fill in the gaps. I mean, they're going to tell you, well, the, the roof's pretty old. Um, it's not leaking, but it, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been replaced for a while. Uh, the furnace works great. It's a gravity feed furnace, which to me, I'm like, okay, well, that's old. Uh, so they're, they'll say the water heater's fine. Like, yeah, you know, do you know the age of the water heater? I have no idea, okay? Um, just asking some of the baseline questions can almost get you in a, when you go and look at it, now you just need to see the condition. You can already know ahead of time, furnace is probably going to need to be replaced. Roof is going to need to be replaced water heater might need to be replaced. So there's three big ticket items. Then you can go in and you can look plumbing, electrical, and you're going to be able to then at least put an offer together quickly um, by looking at those things. But it is an opportunity to find out some of the big ticket items ahead of time. Awesome. Okay. So you ask them, you know, if they could tell you about the house and if they tell you a few things, you might jot it down and then you, you might just start going through and asking a few other things. But do you need to be all inclusive here or do you need to just go set an appointment and meet the person and then walk through? Well, I definitely think that getting an appointment and getting in front of them quickly is absolutely important. And we've, we stress that within our business is get there as fast as you can because there's mm-hmm. two reasons for this. A, it shows them that you are very aggressively interested in seeing the property and getting an offer on the table. But also in the world of competition, you don't want to be like, okay, how how about uh, four days from now? Can we do that? Because in four days time, somebody else might get that same call and be like, hey, I can come by this afternoon. So you got to be that guy that's prepared and ready to, I can come by this afternoon or tomorrow morning or what does your schedule look like? When's the soonest I could see the house and make you an offer? Mm-hmm. You know, getting mm-hmm. that done quickly is absolutely important. I was calling somebody the other day and he had his house listed for 279 and I asked him if he was flexible on the price, if I could come and pay all cash, close within two weeks and cover all of his closing costs. And what he said to me was, um, you know, I'd be happy to receive an offer. And so I took that as yes. All right. He wants an offer. And at that time I had, I had already asked him like, Hey, can you tell me about the house? Is anything wrong with the house? And he did say that, well, the, you know, the kitchen was a little out of date, but nothing at all was wrong with the house. And I kind of ran out of questions to ask him because I wasn't sitting in front of my script. You know, I didn't have that with me whenever I was on the conversation with them. And so the way I wrapped up the call was just, when is a good time for me to get an offer together for you and present that to you? Because I always want to do that either in person or over video chat, if possible, rather than just lobbing an email over. And he's like, well, whenever, this is my cell phone, so just let me know. And I said, okay, thank you very much. I'll get back with you within 24 hours. I'm pretty analytical, so I couldn't on the fly you know, put together an offer, uh, nor did I think he, he had given me enough information to put together an offer. Um, he did have some pictures that I was able to, to go uh, look at. And then based on that, I worked out my offer, put that together on a DocuSign, and then I texted him like, hey, do you have a few minutes? And then we hopped on the phone together and I walked him through that. And I was curious, what's your feedback on my process? How is it similar or different than what you guys do at Heritage Home Investments? It's very similar. Because um, I, I always prefer... I don't like making offers through text. Now, this is just my preference, um, but I just want everything to be very personable, and I want people to interact as people and not, you know, feel like it's just a just a you know robotic plan. Um, mm-hmm. So I generally, you know, push to have the conversation in person or at least on the phone because in text, here's my offer. That's just very disconnected. If you're on the phone or you're in person, A, you're going to see the reaction immediately. What they think of your offer, you're going to see that immediately. Either they 
it's a stoic face or like, whoa, no way, I can't do that. Uh, and it just gives you the ability to then adjust. If it, if it's a text, you can't, that is an advantage. To be able to, to see how somebody reacts to your offer is an absolute advantage in your negotiation. And if you just text them, hey, I'll offer you 10,000. Send, yeah, it's totally easy to do. You don't have to worry about you know having that conversation. If it's if you worry about having anxiety talking to people, just text them because you don't have to do anything. But I feel yeah, like I always have anxiety of where am I going to forget what to say? Uh, <laughs> that's that's something that I feel like. But I just really focus on. Let me not try to come into this conversation with everything that I want to say. Let me just like right. present the facts as I thought about this, and then just just see what they say. And uh, yeah. be open to the conversation going anywhere with the spirit of just being curious about how they're thinking about things and being helpful. Do you ever now, ask I'm curious. them why they want to like, do you ever ask like, why, why do you want to sell this house? Why do you have oh, this Of course, I always ask why they want to sell the house. That's like at the very beginning, if possible. Right. Yeah. That always, to me, that's always a good like introduction into how this conversation is going to go. Because sometimes what I have seen is this last market was it kind of created a monster in terms of sellers. Because the every time I'd go to a semi decent house, then I'm like, this has potential for either flip or a very good burr. You go there and you're like, so why do you want to sell the house? Well, mm -hmm. the market's just really hot right now, and I'm like, oh, that is that this is going to be a tough conversation. Yeah. Now, hang on, hang on a second. A lot of what we're talking about to present this offer ends up requiring how to estimate rehab costs. And, you know, that's going to be in a future episode. So I wanted to just let anybody know we're going to do that in about, you know, two or three episodes from now. How to present the offer as well. We're going to do a deep dive on that in a future episode too. And there was one thing you said, Ryan, you said it could be a good burr. And that, right. if you guys are just listening, that stands for buy renovate the house, rent the house, and then refinance the house. So you get any money you put into it out and then repeat. So then you have all that cash and you can go do it again and again. And with the same money, you can acquire a house that really costs you no money and then recycle it and do it again on a second and third house. So that's what Ryan meant by Burr, buy, rent, renovate, refinance, repeat. Yep. Yeah. And it, and it's, it is a very good tool uh, in terms of getting properties. We all talk about didn't use any of my own money, and that just immediately. I mean, think I know for me, I'm like, didn't use any of your own cash. How on earth did you do that? Like, I, and I don't know if maybe that is the same with you, or if I mean, I don't don't know what what your first experience in buying was, but like, I know Megan and I had serious anxiety about buying our first one and then we're like how did how do you do that without any of your own cash i mean my my first transaction was so cheap that it was like i don't i don't think i can borrow <laughs> the money for this so but like as you start doing more deals you start hearing people say yeah i did this without any of my own cash and you're just like how well like i Obviously, there are ways because everybody talks about how that happens. So, yeah, Burr is a very good way, and, and I'm glad that we will unpack that, and that will be a helpful, helpful moment for a lot of people. On the theme of the episode, I wanted to give a, a the very best story and the very worst story uh, that I've had on the phone um, that I think you'll get a kick out of. So, I'm, I'm and, and I would welcome you to do the same. I would love to hear some of these stories for yourself. So, I got a good one. The, <laughs> one of the very easiest, best calls, easiest thing in the world was my very first house that I bought through marketing. You know, so I found the house that was run down. I had sent the owner a postcard that says, would you be interested in selling your house? I sent it every month for seven months. And finally he called me back and I was doing this for a lot of houses, like probably one, 200 houses. So I didn't know which one it was when he called me, but he said, hello, I got your postcard would I, I'm interested in getting an offer on my house. And I had no idea what to do. I was at the gym at the time. I'd never done one of these types of deals. And I said, okay, great. I'd love to see your house. Can you tell me what the address is? 
And then he told me the address and I pulled it up and I saw that little white house with the blue tarp on the roof. I just knew that was the house for some reason in my mind. And it was. And I said, okay, can I come see it and uh, meet you at, at six o'clock tonight? And he said, yes. And I said, great. And then we hung up the phone. It was like that easy. <laughs> and so uh, then when I went, I was like, I'm just going to take pictures. And, and then I chatted with him about like, oh, what's, what's this part of the house? It looks different than the rest. And, you know, got him talking about that story. Um, it's like, oh, what's, what's this? You, this looks like a toilet paper slash radio holder toilet paper holder slash radio i've never seen one of those and he's like oh yeah you know i i got one of those back in the day and then he's like do you know what you'd offer me on your house i said no i took about 50 pictures i'm not sure but i'll get back with you within 24 hours and so that's how i handled it is whew, i mean it was the easiest conversation there was like zero tactics on my part it was just purely focused on like what what's the next thing i need to do to help this person and if i don't know the answer it's okay I'm just going to say, I don't know. I'll get back with you in 24 hours. So those two things really made that call go smoothly. And he truly wanted an offer on his house. So that made it even smoother. And so that's an important thing to remember if, if you're getting somebody who's difficult on the phone is like, hey, maybe maybe they really just don't need to sell their house right now. Right. Um, the most difficult Can I ask call, you one question real quick? Please. What the heck is a TV toilet paper? Holder. Um, so I, yeah, it was a toilet paper holder slash FM AM radio combined <laughs> device in the wall. Oh, this is insane. I've never heard of anything like this. I know. And I've so seen I, stuff and I'm like, I, I, I can't let you go on without explaining what that toilet paper radio. radio I'll never forget it. Paper. I haven't been able to get it out of my mind since I saw it. I've never seen Jeez. one again. My question is, did you get this house? Did you take it out? Do you have this in your personal possession? Um, I did get the house. I did fix it up, and I do have it in my personal possession. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The toilet paper FM radio got ditched, but oh. I still have the house. Jeez. They didn't make new ones of those, so I had to get rid of it. It didn't go with my new finishes on the inside. Could have been worth millions. And just so you know, I bought this house. I felt this crazy pit in my stomach because I was like, this guy's lived here for 40 years. I think I got to offer him $4,000. I was like, maybe I'll do 10. And then I remembered this one thing I heard that was like, if you don't feel really uncomfortable giving the offer that you're giving, you're not giving the offer low enough because yeah, even experienced true. investors, I was just talking with Ricky Grant, who's in Eugene, Oregon. And he's been doing this for 20 years. And he said himself, our numbers are always wrong. They're always wrong. Sometimes they're wrong in your favor, but most of the time they're wrong when you open up a wall and you see something that you didn't know was there and it's going to cost you extra money. So they've got to leave a healthy margin. And he said on like a $350,000, $400,000 house, they leave like 20, I would say 20% profit margin for them. And that way there's a margin of error and you're still okay if you find some unexpected costs. So remembering that, I was like, nope, not 10,000, 4,000. And he ended up accepting the offer. But that's something we can delve deeper into. I did want to say, when it comes to the phone, I had this really, really funny call from somebody who was very mad. He said, take me off your mailing list. And I said, sir, no problem. Just let me know your address, and then I'll make sure you're taken off. And he refused. He said, you have my address. You don't need me to tell you my address. And it was very <laughs> difficult to explain that I just market to a few different properties besides yours, not just yours. And I, I really don't know which one you own right now unless you tell me your name or you tell me the address. Yep. And so we went round and round, and I thought to myself, if he's so upset by getting a postcard, he must be really hurting somewhere else in his life. And so it finally came out that he's so mad because he's getting a divorce and he's getting tons of mail. And so oh, I was like, oh, wow, I can see why that would be so frustrating. And I agreed with him, which is rule number 16 from Grant Cardone's Closer Survival Guide on page 94. But um, then I was like, 
do you think at some point you will need to sell the house to finish the divorce? And he said, yes, but not today. And I said, I totally get that. Listen, you know, I, I would understand that that's a really tough situation to go through. And if it's okay with you, like, when do you think that might be that you need, that you would want to sell your house? Would an offer be helpful? And somehow we got around this really agitated feeling where he felt people were preying on him, like in a bad way, praying like a, mm -hmm. like a, like a Alan, like a animal would do with its talons, yeah. you know, creatures yeah, of prey, not, not praying for, them. right. But I switched it to praying for him. You know, that was oh, the okay. key. Uh, no, I just thought that would be <laughs> funny to say. Uh, but vibe definitely for sure. And so, um, you know, I, I didn't end up doing that deal, but I was really proud of the way that that phone call got turned around. And that's the point of this podcast episode. So I wanted to share that as my worst, but one that got turned around. I forgot a couple good ones. Um, both, uh, well, one of them was last year, but I'll go back to the very first. I was actually at a um, conference. So we did the, the Max Maxwell 30 Day Wholesaling Challenge. That's what got us started. And we went like just maybe right after we started that, he had his We Live. It was We Live 2020. So we were we were at that conference. And I we were on a break. So we were at the at the Airbnb just relaxing. And I got a phone call. And so I took a call. He's like, Yeah, you sent me this postcard about a house and I got the address. I'm like, can you tell me a little bit about it? And he's like, it's just an absolute dump. Mm. Uh, it's there's just garbage in it. That I've had bad experiences with the tenants. And I asked him, I'm like, what's your ask? Do you have an asking price that you want? And I was so green, man. Like this was so early on in my journey. Now it's like now I know exactly what to ask, and and the conversations get easier and with experience, but I was so green in this. I just was like, well, do you have an asking price? He's like a thousand dollars. And I didn't even think about it. I just said, okay, deal. Cause I'm like a thousand dollars. You can't really go wrong. Right? Well, you can. Uh, cause sometimes a thousand dollars. We're in St. Joe. Okay. So it's right. like in Missouri, it's in the Midwest where properties are cheaper. Now what's the ARV on that house? Do you think an ARV means after repair value? So like perfect condition. Then I didn't that. know. I had no clue then. I mean, I can tell you the ARV now because it's. Yeah, you I were just like, it. well, shit, I have a thousand bucks. I'm willing to risk it because. Yeah, I know. I was like, I okay, thousand dollars deal. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Even though you didn't know the answer, the the twenty answers you might need afterwards, you took right. action. You did the thing that you needed to do, and you just took the next step. Yeah, the hairy part became when I got home. And I'm like, okay, I got to go look at this house. A, I couldn't get in. Like, not because it was, it was totally unsecured. Like, there was nothing, nothing at all that would have prevented anybody from getting in other than the pure amount of garbage that was in the house. I could not get the door open far enough for me to get in. And so we just, you know, did the old F FBI search and seizure, run into the door as hard as you can. We, we, we're able to get in and then I'm like, Oh no, like I have to wholesale this thing. Cause I have no idea. So then it's like going, I, we brought like a, a couple people that we knew were local buyers, uh, in and they're like, not interested, probably needs to be bulldozed. And I'm like, Oh shoot, what have I done? And so I still yeah. closed on the house and I just determined at that point, well, this is going to be my very first, uh, burr because <laughs> i'm like nobody wants to buy this house and i only like i put it out there for like five grand i'm like ah oh, just let's see if we can get somebody to buy it for five thousand dollars yeah and so what was the outcome of that house so we ended a long story we'll have to unpack like this this story is worth uh so much uh because we ended up putting about fifty five thousand dollars into it we only paid a thousand for it but now it's one of our best operating rental properties. It rents for nine ninety five a month. It's a three bed, one bath. It is on housing. The tenant is amazing. Like the house is kept perfectly clean every time we go by there and see it. Um, and so it ARV at ninety two thousand dollars. So 
it went from a thousand dollars to a ninety-two thousand dollar house. And how much did it cost you to put that into into the house? We were all in purchase and everything about fifty-two. Love it, love it. Yeah. And it all started with a conversation you had during your challenge to let yeah. people know you're looking to buy distressed properties that were problems for people, and that is how you found that deal. Yep, yep. And I do we have time for one more? I'll give one more short, sweet to the point. We had a, this was last year. I got a call from a postcard. They're like, we've tried to sell this house with many other people and nobody does it. They get it under contract and then they back out. I'm like, okay, well, there's probably a reason for that. So I go and look at the house. It is bad, but I'm like, I've done, I started out with a thousand dollar house. It can't really get any worse than this. So I'm like, you know, I sat down with them in the living room as I'm sitting there, I'm literally watching cockroaches crawling over this guy's shirt. Like just, I'm like, I got to get out of here. So I'm like, how much do you want for the house? And they're like, you can just have it. If you are willing to take it and take care of all the stuff with the city, you can just have the house. And I said, how about this? I'll give you guys a gift card to Applebee's. We'll sell the house. You sell the house to me for a dollar and let's just get this done and over with. And now, so how did you know I, you didn't buy a piece of crap that well I went worth, there and I looked at worth it. nothing forever yeah how did you uh, what happened next was it was it valuable to buy a house like that for zero one dollar I sold that house for eight thousand dollars so I'm I mean I made the only thing I was out was the twenty five dollar Applebee's card like that was all that all that was out and they just wanted to get rid of it it was a headache for them they've been trying to sell it they couldn't sell it so it's like okay well I'll buy it. I'm going to make it a dollar in Applebee's gift card so you guys can go have dinner at least. And then I turned around and sold the house for 8,000 and the good thing is, is I've been like I've been by there several times. The house has been fixed up. It's rented. I'm like, "Yes, that is such a relief. Like it's so gratifying to be able to see not only did I did I get it and make a good profit on it, but it's now an operational house again. Somebody lives there." It's keeping people warm at night. Like that's such a gratifying feeling. It is such a gratifying feeling. I love the genius of the Applebee's gift card. And I love that you made $8,000 on that house. And unfortunately, we're out of time. And so I want you guys to take your very biggest takeaway. And I want you to find Heritage Home Investments on IG. And I want you to tell Ryan, what was your number one takeaway from that episode? That would really help us out. We're really learning from what you guys are telling us. Um, so Heritage Home Investments on IG, tell them the one thing that you took away from this. This was your episode on answering calls. And remember, it can just start out with, do you own this house? And would you like an offer on this property? And if they say yes, you can say, well, if I can close quickly and with cash and pay all of your closing costs, are you flexible on price? And then that can lead the conversation in a good place and relieve that stress that might be on your shoulders. So again, Heritage Home Investments on IG, let them know the one thing you took away. We're going to do a few more episodes coming up. I wanted to tell you guys, uh, we're going to talk about what to do on an appointment. We're going to talk about how to analyze a deal, how to estimate renovation costs, finding buyers for your deals that you find and you want to assign and make an assignment fee wholesaling, and also how to present that deal to buyers. So stay tuned for more episodes, and we can't wait to catch you on the next one. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.